Greetings, everybody out there in YouTube land. I'm your host once again, Dan Thornton, and I want to thank you all for joining me today for Lions Talk Live Morning Show Edition with the Dew Crew. And you know what? Uh, we got a little bit of a tidbit what the Lions might do next. Uh, in a report yesterday, Lions were talking to, uh, excuse me, reporters were talking to uh, MCDC and talking to them about, hey, the fact that Detroit Lions added Vildor, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, and, you know, MCDC gave a little bit of a tidbit saying, you know, the Lions probably aren't done adding. So they're liking, uh, would like to add help for uh, safety now, which I think we all get. You got Brian Branch. You got uh, Ify Malifanu. Uh, you got Kirby Joseph. But there is probably room on the roster for another safety, maybe two. And you know what? I think MCDC you know, maybe told us a little bit about where the Lions might be looking to go still before the draft or maybe just in the draft. He wasn't very specific about uh, where they're going to go or where they're going to acquire the said safety. But it said it's now probably the next area of importance for the team and what they're wanting to work on sooner versus later. He had some other tidbits in his uh, brief conversation with the uh, media and basically said, hey, the, basically what you would expect uh, any representation from the Detroit Lions say, we're never going to stop looking to improve the team, upgrade, et cetera. Asked about uh, um, free agency a little bit and how that's gone. He thought it's gone very well. He's been very happy with the selections. The guys have been able to retain uh, a couple of the signings he briefly spoke about, like, you know, Davis the third, Robertson, et cetera, DJ, uh, reader, he went on for a little bit longer than maybe some of the others, and I think we all get it. He MCDC views DJ Reader as one of his type of guys. I think he feels that way about all the signings, but you could uh, see from how much he talked about Reader that he was very into th uh, that addition. I guess would be a good way to put it. All right, uh, before we get in, get into the meat of the show, uh, if you aren't aware, uh, just a couple little things. Uh, if you haven't yet subscribed to Lions Talk Live, please consider doing so. Now making our push for 6,400 subs. Uh, we hit 6,300 yesterday, so now I'm making the move for 64. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please consider doing that. It helps out the channel. Also, if you enjoyed the video, the content there within, all that type of stuff, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. It helps us out exponentially. Last but never least, in case you're unaware, outside of being a YouTuber and uh, a coach, I'm a realtor. I have been for a really long time. Uh, if you're looking to buy or sell property anywhere in the great state of Michigan, feel free to reach out to me, 269-998-2384. Uh, Let's see if I can use over 30 years of experience in the industry, working with commercial property, uh, reconstruction property, flips, whatever it may be, rental property, vacant land, and everything in between. Give me a call. Shoot me a text, 269-998-2384. 2384. Let's see what we can do to help you out. All right, let's go ahead and get into today's show. I think there's a lot of questions building up where the Lions will end up going with the uh, things in the NFL draft. And I think it's one of the biggest guessing games in all the NFL. Obviously, yesterday we got news that the uh, Texans and Bills made a, I'd say, a blockbuster trade. Texans, man, they're they're looking pretty legit. They're all in it. They might be come Super Bowl contenders real quick here if they're not already. Detroit Lions, I'm going to guess most people think we are Super Bowl contenders now. There's depth across this team. There's talent across this team. You've got one of the only franchises around with this much talent that have still been able to maintain the same coordinators for as what it's ever. It's been a two, three seasons. I guess this will be the third season with Ben Johnson. The entire time that MCDC has been uh, the head coach, uh, Aaron Glenn's been the defensive coordinator. So that, I think, especially early in the season, helps out a ton. It helps out with the continuity, et cetera. But uh, like you saw in the thumbnail, still looking to add more. Where do we go? Is it just safety that we add? Do we look at other positions? Is it offensive line? Is it wide receiver? I know I was on Micro Mike's show a couple of days ago, and uh, we talked about a couple uh, wide receiver options for the team. But let's see what you guys think. Are we done with things before the draft, or are we still going to add more? Personally. I think uh, I think we may add some more. So, all right, let's see what you guys got. Here we go. All right, Trumps, woo! The first woo of the show, and thank you for that. Uh, Trumps, first pick is defensive end. All right, now which defensive end would you prefer? That's I guess my question to you. All right, uh, Mike the Marine, howdy, Dan Lions faithful. You <laughs> you do 
Great work, Dan. Yes, uh, thank you for that. And yeah, I'm I'm uh, I'm waiting for that uh, the store that's going in to what my old Circle K or whatever the one that I'd frequented for 20 plus years. They're supposed to actually have the facilities up and running fully uh, Friday. You know what? I can't wait to see if do they still have the magic of the old do. Because let me tell you, I went to a speedway yesterday on the way to the gym, and that stuff. Mm, that, that ain't my Mountain Dew, I can say that. <laughs> All right, uh, Bo, what do you got? Good morning, Dew Crew, Superdome, or bust, exclamation points. Uh, never standing still at anything, upgrade or depth. Yes, I'm, I'm with you. And, you know, is it a huge headline that the Lions are looking to still add players? Probably not. I think most people probably understand the way this front office works. But I did think it was noteworthy that, uh, they, that both Brad Holmes and MCDC stated that they're still looking to add, and especially safety. So I don't know if that means they just, you know, doing the normal lip service, hey, we're, we're going to add some more players here, or does this maybe foretell that some of the guys we have at safety are going to be moved around to different spots, or who knows, man. I do think it's going to be a really fun defense to watch this year. I, I know I've said it a ton of times on the show and the channel. I think we're going to be Blitzburg. I think we're just going to go after everybody. We're going to unleash – linebackers, uh, safeties, cornerbacks. I mean, we're going to not just sack your uh, the other team's quarterback. We're going after their family up in the stands. And personally, that's what I like. I do. I hate it when teams are passive. Just wait for the other team to make a mistake. Just wait for them. They'll eventually make a mistake. Nah, go hit them. You hit somebody enough, they'll make a mistake. And they'll make it real quick. <laughs> All right, hook it up. Uh, good morning, Coach and Duke crew. Fam, grit, 100%. And hey, real quick, before I forget, uh, hook a do good morning. Um, just want to give a shout out. Selfish moment here. Uh, yesterday, the all state selections for basketball came out for high school sports. And you know what? We uh, we were very fortunate. We had one team, uh, one kid make first team, the other uh, kid made second team. So if you don't know what that means, a kid who made first team, they're considered one of the top 10 players in the state, second teamer, one of the top 20 players in the state. So kudos to those kiddos for that. Just figured I'd give them a shout out. So they. They work their tail off to earn it. All right, uh, let's see. What do we got here? Uh, George, uh, greetings, salutations, everyone. Who are we thinking about adding at safety? That's the big question. Um, I would think it's not going to be somebody with a uh, super huge uh, price tag or star power, whatever you want to say, because I think our stars are here. I, I don't think the team's in any kind of hurry to supplant or replace Ify Kirby or Brian Branch. I just think uh, it'd probably be somebody at depth. Who that's going to be, man, your guess is as good as mine on that one. All right, Trump, good morning, all. I'm a little surprised we didn't pick up a proven defensive end. I'm thinking that uh, our first pick. Yeah, and I get it. It would make a lot of sense. I know, you know, everybody in the show, we've talked for, it's got to be at least a week now about, in my opinion, I won't be surprised if the Lions trade up to, like, pick number 20 or, 17, you know, something like that, late teens, early 20s, to acquire one of the better pass rushers in this draft. Um, you know, we've talked about it, Ignazium, about the fact I just don't see how we're going to be able to maintain or retain, I should say, seven draft picks this year. The team's just too deep. It's too talented. I mean, could it happen? Sure. But to me, it would make more sense to go up and get one of the rare players. Uh, but I guess it also, to be fair, it comes down to how the scouting department and Brad Holmes views those players. They don't feel like they're that rare. They're probably not paying up to get them. All right, David, good morning, all. I think the first pick should be defensive end. Defensive end or, I mean, in my opinion, defensive end or offensive line. And I guess it just comes down to what's on the board at that time or what we can go out and acquire. I think we go either route, we're in pretty good shape. And I know we've run, what, three mock drafts so far with the Duke crew, and it seems like Jackson Powers Johnson, he hasn't been the first-round pick all the time, but he's been near the, uh, I think, at least two of the times. And he, the more mock drafts I see, the more it seems like he's the consensus person to fall to us. There's been other ones where you got the, was it Browers or whatever, the tight end, from, the sort of tight end wide receiver from Georgia who's fallen to us. There's been a couple other drafts that have had uh, Chop Robinson come to us, um, and there's probably other guys I'm not considering off the top of my head. But David, I'm I'm with you and uh, Trumps on this one. I I think there's a higher probability it will be defensive end. All right, uh, so let's see, Hatman. Good morning, Dan, Dan Hanmus, and the Duke uh, crew family. Woo! Good morning to you too. 
Uh, Mike, I like the cornerback uh, Vildor si a resigning question. If he would have intercepted that pass, do you think the referee, uh, the referee Quentin uh, Blackman, would not have waived the penalty that was thrown on the play? Whew. Man, that's a good question. My guess is they probably would have thrown the flag. They probably would have gotten the penalty, but maybe I'm wrong, man. Uh, who knows? I just think at, at that point, given how just stunning that catch was, they probably didn't want to throw salt on the wound. I don't, I don't know, man. That's a great question, though, Mike. A real good one. Eddie, what do you got? Good morning, everyone. Can't say I have any issues with this offseason. <clears throat> Holmes and company just seem to be doing everything right. They do. They are. Um, this team's gotten, at least on paper, uh, sorry, guys, got something in my throat. Hold on a second. All right, there we go. Um, yeah, at least on paper, they've they've added depth. They've added talent. They've added starters. They, you know, the, we've only lost a couple players from last year's NFC title game uh, team. And I think it'd be easy to say that this team has gotten better across the board at a number of key positions. So, yeah, I think you're right. They're doing everything right. Uh, Trump's uh, Vildor carries 10 of CJ stock traps. Very good. And fair enough. Uh, Dennis, good morning. Good morning to you, too. Trey, uh, what's good, all? Question mark. Coach, I have a question for you. Uh, do you not uh, not uh, need to – oh, you do not need to answer it if you don't uh, wish to. What is up with the Will guy uh, on YouTube? Uh, question mark. He seems obsessed with you. Talking smack a few times a week. I guess uh, I guess I don't know who Will is. So, um, did you talk uh, take uh, talk his lady or something? Question mark. Yes, the be a, yeah. There has to be a story why he brings you up so much. I guess. Uh, sorry, Trey. I guess I just don't know who Will is. So uh, apologies for that. And uh, I'm not aware of anything I've done to somebody on YouTube. So I don't know. Can't really answer that one, man. Sorry. Sorry about that. All right, uh, Trump's. CD, CD douche. I never cared uh, for big mouth all talk when he knew he wasn't playing. When he got his chance, he uh, stunk. Okay, fair enough. Uh, yeah, and I was a little surprised by some of his comments. I mean, he does have an opinion. He's, you know, he's had an opinion the entire time he's been in the league, and that just seems to be who he is. Uh, my guess is, and it's just a guess, I don't know the dude, but uh, my guess is he wanted to stay here in Detroit. Felt a little shafted that I'm guessing the Lions didn't make him an offer. I felt uh, I get the impression the Lions never tended him an offer to uh, stay with the team. Maybe I'm completely wrong, but I think they looked at Iffy. They look at Kirby. They look at Branch and said, you know, we're good here. Uh, thank you for your season here. But, uh, yeah, we're, we're going a different direction. And my guess is that probably rubbed him the wrong way. <clears throat> All right, Robert, uh, good morning, Dan and crew, waving at you. Everyone else is spending money while Brad is hoarding it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, still good old uh, yeah, Dollar General Brad, 100%. But I'll say this, Dollar General Brad, why he might not have spent on any big, big-time uh, players, other than I guess you could say DJ Reader's contract was, was decent and acquiring him was uh, pretty big. Uh, he spread the what money we had or have. Uh, he spread it across a number of different guys. I get he's brought a ton of people in on one-year prove-it deals and stuff like that. But this team's deep. I, I would argue with anybody, this is the deepest team in the NFL currently, and we still have the NFL draft with currently seven draft picks. So let's see what shakes. Anthony, good morning, Duke Crew, Super Bowl or bust, exclamation point, football. And let me tell you, Thank you for all you do for the channel and all your help there, buddy. I couldn't do all this without you guys, and you've definitely been a, a key member of the Dude Crew. All right, Hatman, I uh, love seeing that uh, that Brock is staying with us. He blocks well and makes big plays when he when we need him. Time to get uh, back biting kneecaps. Yeah, and I'm with you, Hatman. Uh, I think most people were expecting Brock Wright was gone, that he wasn't going to be here. But kudos, man, you know. Late in the shot clock, whatever you want to say, uh, the Lions stepped up and made the offer, got him re-signed, you know, matched it, whatever you want to say, but he's here, and I think we're better for it. Just one less thing you got to worry about with either, you know, drafting a player or whatever. We know what Brock Wright is. We know what he can do. We know what he brings to the table. Uh, France, good evening, all. I'm so glad we didn't keep C.J. Garner-Johnson. Uh, the guy just feels like nonstop drama. There's 
there could be a little bit to that too. And, you know, I, I don't want to make much of it, but I'll say this. He's gone through three teams in about five years in the league. And I get he's going back to Philadelphia where he's played or he played right before Detroit. Um, but when he, when somebody in that early in their careers, you know, churning through teams, you, it does at least bring up the question, why is that happening? You know, and I don't know, may, maybe there's a multitude of reasons. I would say it, it, there's probably something to do with his personality that's made some teams move on from him. I don't know. I'm speculating. I don't know the guy, but uh, I have been surprised by some of his comments, but that doesn't mean he's a bad person or anything. It just means he likes to express himself. <clears throat> All right, Trump, uh, Brock seems to catch what's thrown to him, too. Yes, this is true. He doesn't put him on the ground. All right, hook it to Good morning, Anthony. Go Lions. All right, uh, let's see. Joseph, yeah, CD, Deuce, whatever he calls himself. Uh, he He's talking smack about Detroit now, exclamation points. Ha uh ha, -huh. he uh, is a joke. You know, when he was over here, he was talking smack about Philadelphia, and we all know that. Yeah, and he's, he's talked smack about everybody, so... Again, I know I mentioned it earlier. It seems like if he's not resigned by a team, that really upsets him. And, uh, yeah, he, he kind of unloads on him. All right, uh, Dean, what do you got? Trump's genius. I'm glad we were signed right. Solid player. Does whatever he's asked of him. Yeah, and he's, he seems like a prototypical lion. Uh, you can say that about a number of the guys they've say or retained. Um, you know, Vildor, obviously, he's he, he's going to be remembered for that moment. I get it. But he did play fairly well throughout the season, given the fact that he's, is he a number one or two corner? No, he was forced in those roles at times because there's just nobody else. And for the most part, he did a decent sign. Uh, he did a decent set of uh, results out there, but I think he's going to be far better off when he's matched up with the other teams. Number, you know, three, four, five receiver. The further he goes down on the depth chart against the receivers, he's probably going to do better and better. All right, Joseph. So uh, that's wise, uh, trying to talk all kinds of smack about everybody else and uh, excuse me, everybody and everybody on the team now because they know what we know and what kind of smack he was talking when he was down here. Yeah, he, you know, and C.J. Gardner Johnson, he's a smack talker. You know, that's just who he is, and right, wrong, or different, you, you're going to sign him. You know that's part of who you're getting. All right, uh, Anthony, our own Motor City Maulers, 100% with that. And we, I think that's a good uh, that's a good one for the defensive line or maybe the offensive line too. Uh, Joseph, good morning, Anthony. All right. <clears throat> uh, Joseph, good morning, Coach and Duke. Good morning to you too, Joseph. Good morning. Matthew, read the citations. Good morning, everyone. Super Bowl or bus, exclamation point. Woo, exclamation points. If you uh, want to add to the safety room, then you can't go wrong with, okay, Mike Centrillis, uh, team leader, very smart football guy. Yeah, the, the Michigan dude, yep, uh, might not be a bad pickup. Uh, I think most most people in this channel probably know who he is just because he played at Michigan and such, but you might be right. That might not be a bad pickup there, Matthew. Good call. All right, Anthony, uh, good uh, morning. Hookadoo, go Lions, 100%. Morning, Joseph, says Anthony. Uh, Dave, what do you got? Good morning, all, exclamation points. Glad to uh, glad for the dude crew and the show every day. It really has become something to me. Yeah, I, th I think uh, just about everybody in the chat, this is something that has become a part of our, our everyday mornings. And I enjoy it to death. I look forward to it. I wake up. Man, what's the topics to talk about today? I'm, I'm guessing everybody's in the same boat as that. You know, it's just, it's something to do maybe while you're driving to work or at work or, you know, just sipping on your morning Mountain Dew or coffee or whatever. And, hey, I'm, I'm very thankful for everybody who's here. <clears throat> all right, Bo, uh, resigning right, Vildor, and all the other guys so far is great. Keeping the group together is a big part of the culture. Grit is earned, and I like the way Brad Holmes is rewarding them. Yeah, you come here to Detroit, you, uh, you buy into what we're doing, you're part of us, we're going to reward you. We're going to take care of you. And uh, give kudos to Brad Holmes, Dan Campbell, Chris Spielman, uh, Sheila Hamp, all of them. Because what they've done in such an incredibly little amount of time to revitalize the franchise, the fan base. Uh, you, I know we've talked about this, I think, yesterday. If the Lions do really go out and have a 10, <clears throat> excuse me, 10, 12, 14, you know, 99 win season, whatever it's going to be. Uh, I think we get to the point where people will for the most part, have forgotten. As far as current NFL players, et cetera, will have forgotten what the Lions were prior to this regime. 
all they'll know is what they've really seen the last three to four years, and that's a team that does fight, that is one of the better ones in the NFL, that drafts well, takes care of their own people. Uh, and Bo, everybody listening, I think this is awesome. I think we're just getting started with what potentially might be the the brand new lines. I get people have called them that before, but yeah, we're the the days of looking down on the lines are probably in the rear view mirror. All right, Bo, Motor City Maulers, I like it. Me too. I like it. I, I don't remember who came up with it, but I think they did a great job with it. All right, Joseph, really love this channel. Exclamation points. Never thought I'd uh, see myself on YouTube like this. Never was a YouTuber until I started watching the show. Exclamation point. Lions Talk Live. Woo! Lots of exclamation points. Hey, I, I think we're all in the same way, man. I would watch it from time to time before I got talked into doing the channel. Uh, I know Dosa Dion, Micro Mike. Uh, and there's other guys out there, uh, Luke G, you know, I would drive around whatever, you know, going to show houses or going to coaching events or, or whatever, scouting events, and just kind of listen to it while I was, you know, on the plane or whatever. And then one day somebody said, hey, why don't you do it? And I was like, all right, grab the phone and just kind of did a video. And from there, it just kind of kept matriculating, I guess you could say. And I enjoy this to death, man. Hopefully you guys do as well. All right, Anthony, uh, why did we, uh, why did we resign? Uh, BW question mark, not mad, just figured we really uh, didn't need Brock, right? I mean, I guess just because what he does and does well, I mean, there are some differences between him and say uh, Mitchell and even Laporta. Uh, he's probably the best run blocker, all of them. I really thought James Mitchell, when he came in the league, would do better with it, at least at this point. Uh, I'd say it's mixed results on his run blocking. Laporta, let's let's be fair. He, he run blocks fairly well, but when he's out on the field, he's mostly out there to run routes and get openings uh, against the defense. All right, Trump. Uh, what do you guys think about linebacker? I would uh, question mark. I would mind another stud linebacker in the mix and back up running back in case of injury. I would think that we'll probably address both in the draft, assuming we don't trade you know a ton of picks to move up or something like that. Uh, now, where they're going to be in the depth chart will remain to be seen. But my guess is you're probably getting a running back drafted, a wide receiver, uh, offensive line, uh, defensive line, linebacker, cornerback slash safety, and potentially either like kicker or, or something else. Although I still think if the uh, Michigan Panthers guy does well a uh, few more weeks, we're probably trying to sign him, although a lot of teams in the league are going to be looking to sign him too. All right, uh, Jedi, <laughs> Jedi Sith music, first time to the morning show. Found this place yesterday. Well, welcome on in, and hopefully um, you have a musical time with it. So I have not heard of that one, but that's a good one. All right, uh, Nathan. Morning, Duke crew. Can't wait for the draft. Brad, going to shock us all. And, man, are there? you guys might know more than I do, but I would be curious if there are, like, Vegas, you know, lines or whatever to bet on what uh, Brad Holmes drafts, you know, what position-wise or what player or whatever. Because uh, I got to imagine it's one of the – one of the bigger mysteries, which direction the Lions are going to go, because really they could seemingly, other than quarterback, I don't think they're going to draft a quarterback in the first round. Uh, I think they could go with almost any position out there. <clears throat> All right, Bo, welcome to the right side of the force, uh, Jedi. Yes, there you go. Well said. All right, uh, Hatman, make sure to hit that like button for Dan, even if you watch it on replay. Let's help Dan stay the goat of the Lions content. Uh, thank you for that, Hatman. 100%. And yeah, if you haven't yet subscribed and or if you like the show, hit the thumbs up button or the, the subscription button. And thank you for that. Uh, Robert G, guess you're going to have to make some new t-shirts at Andy. There you go. Uh, Motor City Maulers. There you go. Those would be good. Uh, Bill, what do you got? Degrees and citations, everyone. Do crew or bust. 100%. You got to be a part of the do crew. All right. Trump at uh, 29. Brad picks a guy none of us ever heard of. There could be a lot of truth to that, 100% to that. Uh, you know, probably not many people. I'm going to guess probably 99.9% .9 of the fan base out there did not see the Lions picking Gibbs last year. Uh, you know, maybe some kind of speculated on tight end in the second round or whatever to play or replace Hawkinson. But, uh, yeah, 100%. No, nobody's going to probably guess which way we're actually going to go. All right, Atman, welcome, Jedi. This is a great show. Hopefully, you're all enjoying it, including the, the Jedi one. All right, uh, Matthew, first picks need to be defense, unless you can get an O-line player that can start now, like a Zach Frazier. 
Uh, defense is not deep at the top. Dan Jeremiah and uh, Bucky did an all defense mock draft. Uh, yeah, Jeremiah and Bucky. Yeah, did I did see sar- uh, some of that? Although I haven't really watched it a ton, but there is a strong possibility. Well, I don't know if it's going to be all defense. That I I could see the first couple picks of you know first, second, third rounder being defensive orientated players. So probably defensive line, you know, safety, maybe linebacker, something like that. But at some point, I do believe you're going to have to get some offensive line and wide receivers, maybe even running back. Although, with that being said, if they don't go offensive line, it could be a tell that some of these younger guys that we've had last year and in et cetera are really starting to develop, and they feel like there's a lot of room for growth or promise with those guys. So maybe they don't view it as big a need as perhaps some of us do. All right, uh, Joseph, lo- uh, let's see, uh, love Brock, 100% and exclamation points. He is a great person, player, and very important piece to the team, exclamation point. Uh, I didn't think Coach Dan would let him go because uh, he always talk, uh, talk high praise about him and how much dirty work he does. He does. Yeah, he's one of those guys that just kind of grinds. You know, probably doesn't put up ever stellar stats. Isn't a lot of flash. But with that being said, there's been a number of times Brock Wright's caught a pass and, sh- you know, shaked and baked his way down the field. He had one last year. Was it against the Rams? I think everybody remembers the year prior when he took that one to the house against the Jets. So, I mean, he does have some playmaking ability. He's uh, He just doesn't stand out as much as other players at times. But, yeah, he does a lot of good things. Uh, Kay, what I got? Good morning, all. Good morning to you, too. Matthew, uh, T. Gray had a hard time making it through the first round. There you go. That's true. Uh, Matthew, what do you got? Daniel Jeremiah also anointed Marshawn Nealon as one of his favorite edge players. Hey, <clears throat> I, clearly, Jeremiah's got an eye for talent. And I get, you know, some will say I'm a homer because the kid played, you know, like three miles from uh, from where I live. But I'm just trying to be as brutally honest as I can be when I evaluate a person, their strengths and weaknesses. His weaknesses are he needs a lot of development. He's a lot like Broderick Martin in that regard. You know, Broderick Martin and Marshawn Nealon are genetic freaks of nature. What they can do with that size and have that kind of bend, flexibility, and speed, athleticism, is incredibly rare. You, me, and every coach that's ever been out there can't teach that stuff. What you can say with Broderick Martin and Neyland are that they both need a lot more polish and technique as far as learning how to use their hand placement, how to you know contort players, how to uh, use leverage over people. They get that stuff down, and that's, those are coachable things that I think Broderick Martin's going to be a pretty good player. Uh, same with Neyland, and you guys have heard me talk about that for a while, so I won't go on with it, but you get the gist. All right, Trump, uh, spelling can be pretty tough at 6.45 in the morning. Yes, it can be, man. It's, some of us, man, it's a 24 hours a day thing. Uh, sometimes my spelling is so bad, you can't even, you know, the spell check can't save me. We'll put it that way. All right, uh, Mike the Marine, LOL, fair enough. All right. <laughs> uh, Anthony, Robert, uh, not uh, not my, uh, Robert, not mine, ones I had, our one-time deal, had to get ones through the little site. Okay, fair enough, and there you go. Uh, let's see, Joseph, go Lions. God, I cannot wait until the preseason, which starts uh, with Hendon Hooker, see what he's about, and then the rest of the free agency. I cannot wait, exclamation points. Woo! 100% with that, a lot of exclamation points behind that. Uh, but I'm going to say this. I think you're right. I think these preseason games in the Detroit Lions history, they I, I have no idea if they'll be the most watched of all time, but I think they're going to be pretty high up there. I could see the if we have one or two games at four field, I don't know if there'll be sellouts, but I think they'll be packed because I think there's a lot of fans like you, Joseph, who want to see Hendon Hooker. And what is he? What is he not? Go from there. All right, uh, Bo, what do you got? Helps to get up at five. Yes, I agree. Uh, I get up uh, just before six o'clock, you know, just to get the mind woken up and all that stuff. Maybe, uh, you know, just kind of get ready for the show. All right, Hatman Trump. Yeah, my fingers are go faster than my brain. 100% with that. <clears throat> Trump or go to bed before five. There you go. All right, uh, Polar Bear, signing Vildor in right makes it uh, more likely that Brand Holmes will trade up for Latua. There you go. I would rather risk the injury history with Latua than settle for a defense fan with less upside or Barton or uh, Jackson Powers Johnson. Yeah, I think all of them are good, good, uh, good to go players. It will be interesting to see what happens on draft day with Latua because of the neck injury history. But if you have multiple teams <clears throat> fighting to get him, that means multiple teams also said, you know what, he's good to go. 
All right, uh, Hookadoo, uh, Trump's never, uh, I hear you on that 100%. Tim, what do you got? Good morning, Duke Crew. Good morning to you, Tim. Hopefully you have an outstanding one. Uh, Anthony, I've been watching tape on Hooker. I'll tell you this, the kid isn't afraid of dropping his shoulder and giving you the business. No, he, he he's he's a pretty good-sized dude. Now, I would say the NFL, they're going to want to coach him out of that just because, man, those those hits add up. But he he can run, he can throw. And he's got some he's got some muscle mass to him. So I think you're spot on with that, Anthony. All right, uh, Joseph. Yes, Marshawn Nealon is going to end up going uh, in the top 20, I think. I just uh, now look up his highlights. Coach and Matthew Grace, I agree with you all. He's going to be a beast, and I hope we get him. I do too. And I know there's some people that say he's going to be a second or third rounder. I, it may be a second rounder, but if it is a second rounder, I think it's a high second rounder. I just think I can't be the only village idiot out here that sees his physical aspects. Now, mind you, I don't get to interview him, so I can't tell you anything about his personality. I Just because he's been around here in some local media, I've got a pretty good idea what it is, but not enough to where I'd say, hey, do this or that on him. Uh, I just think he's got, like I've said earlier in the show, he's got a lot of stuff you can't teach or coach. So I tend to, as a coach, elevate and go after that, same as this, when it comes to scouting. Because if they've got the right personality trait and they've got all the genetic aspects, you can now, it just comes down to how much you believe in your coaching staff to bring the, the other traits out of them, the teachable stuff. All right, Trump's uh, first thing for sure, only Brad and MCDC know what's up. This is true. Yeah, they're not letting that information get out of the house. All right, Robert, uh, smile, thumbs up. I was just kidding, Anthony, uh, laughing. I was pretty sure you had enough of that. It's not easy doing what you do. Uh, but glad you did a great job. Yeah, Anthony did an outstanding job with stuff, man, for sure, without question with that. <clears throat> all right, uh, Bo, uh, up in the morning uh, with the rising sun, going to talk all day until the talk is done. Very good. Good enough. And uh, let's see, Matthew, there was a rumor that the Chiefs might want to uh, move a couple of spots. The Lions uh, would get the number 32 and a second. That would be a good move for us because we could still trade 32 to a team that wanted a fifth-year option. This is true, and I know there was speculation that uh, maybe the Panthers tried to trade up with us to uh, leapfrog the Chiefs so they can get to you know wide receiver or something of that sort. Who knows what's going to happen? But we're in a pretty ideal spot with the 29th pick for a number of teams. If there are quarter, if there is a quarterback that falls or other players that somebody wants the fifth-year option, we're going to be a targeted uh, draft pick for sure. All right, uh, Mike the Marine, nobody knows. It's crazy, yes, and they're not going to let us know. And, you know, we're all going to speculate what's going to happen the, in the draft, but I think most of us are going to be really, really caught off guard by what actually happens in the draft. <clears throat> all right, Dennis, bring back Diggs. Now, that's something I know a, a, pup, a couple of people have thrown around. I'd be interested to see if he'd be willing to come back to Detroit and also probably as a mentor backup, not as a starting player. <clears throat> All right, Trumps, since we don't really need any specific player, I'm thinking it would be a defensive end or a Ragnow's replacement. Yeah, that could be. So either scenario. So could it be Jackson Powers Johnson or somebody similar, uh, Frazier, or yeah, could it be defensive end? I think both would make the most sense, but uh, doesn't matter what I think. All right, Robert, I would have bought one at Anthony, but I'm poor and I do have to buy my clothes at Dollar General. Hey, nothing wrong with that, man. Nothing wrong with that. Anthony, uh, yeah, I'm good on the shirts. <laughs> Fair enough, man. All right, uh, Detroit D, greetings, salutations to everyone. Back at you. Hopefully you have a great morning, my friend. All right, uh, Eduardo, good morning, everyone. Let's have a day, 100% exclamation point. I like the way you're thinking. All right, Trumps, let's make it uh, 77 likes. Yeah, I can't see on my end what it is or isn't as far as likes. I can tell you there's uh, looks like 400 people on the show, so hopefully we can get a few likes. All right, uh, let's see. Eduardo, what would be more specific, uh, poetic? Beating what would be more poetic? Beating Green Bay to advance the first Super Bowl or beating Aaron Rodgers to win the first Super Bowl? I'm going to go with beating Green Bay because in this scenario, because that puts us in the Super Bowl. We get there, man. Whoever's on the other side, we're just going to beat them down. All right, Joseph, I would be happy if we got Marshawn Nealon with our first pick. It wouldn't upset me none. No, me, me too, man. Um yeah, I, I could see that happening more and more, especially when we get closer to the draft, uh, just because, again, the, the measurables. All right, uh, Silver Silver, hello, Coach, and everyone else. As I wrote yesterday in the comments, I was surprised the Lions matching that offer. They must value Brock a lot. 
I wonder for that number two tight end spot, Wright or Mitchell. Um, you know, who, who knows, man? Um, you know, you got Laporta, you got Brock Wright. Whew. Uh, maybe, maybe Mitchell. Uh, I, I don't know. You got a lot of flexibility there because we have Zilstra back too. All right, uh, Eduardo, Houston has one of the oldest owners in the NFL, and I'm not surprised they are going all in on this. Probably a mandate for him, yeah. And same with, like, uh, what Jerry's World in Dallas. Uh, I've been surprised they haven't made a few specific changes to that roster, but I think he's also aware Jerry is, you know, he's he's getting up there in age, man, and he's waited close to 30 years from the last Super Bowl to, to where they are now. Yeah, time is not on his side, unfortunately. All right, uh, Hookadoo, uh, Robert G. Don't worry, Brad Holmes uh, shops there also. This is true. He's in fact might he might not just be the chairman, he might be the owner, <laughs> or whatever that old saying is. Not just a client. I'm a, I'm a, a president too, or whatever. All right, uh, Trumps. Yes, I think uh, Detroit versus Texans. Yeah, Super Bowl. That that would be a pretty nice Super Bowl. Anthony Broski, you get the cheese to the coach. Don't uh, want to hear you cries. When the Bear Cubs lose. All right, fair enough. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, Brent uh, Green, salutations all. I'm still hoping we get offensive line and edge early and then a developmental cornerback later in the draft. That could be where we go. I like the way you're thinking there, Brent. All right, Eduardo does Houston and the rookie com- uh, Houston and the rookie combine for 15-plus sacks or Hutch and Aleem combined for over 24. Oof. Oof. That I don't know. Um I'm still thinking, until proven otherwise, it's going to be Houston and Aiden Hutchinson at the ends. DJ Aleem um, on first and second now as your interior defensive lineman. After that, uh, who knows, man? Um, I could see where DJ comes out on like second and long or third and long, and maybe Pascal comes in there. But I'm going to say this. Let's go and throw it out there, speak into existence between uh, the opposite defensive end of Hutch and Hutch. I'm going to go for close to 30 sacks. So does that mean Hutch gets 15 and the other guy gets 15? Who knows, man? Uh, but I think they're going to be able to put some real pressure on people this year. All right, Robert uh, Hookadoo, my point exactly, 100%. Uh, Anthony, or excuse me, Broski, Anthony, uh, you're super chatted. Yeah, you super chatted 50, uh, which means Dan only gets 35. Need to find out if Dan has cash up so I can send that that way. Need to send him 15 more somehow. Yeah, I, I guess I I didn't know that. So I'll uh, uh I do not have a cash app. Uh, Jen Jen probably does, I guess, for her uh, training stuff. So uh, that I can find out, man. But uh, yeah, I, I have no idea what percentage. Uh, man, does YouTube really take out that much? But I'll figure it out and let you guys know. And then the super bet is on. <laughs> Everybody on the Duke crew can watch and watch this thing throughout the season. All right, Eduardo, best player available all the way if they are good. They will find a way into onto the field. The coaching staff is not shy on benching players. There you go. I'm down with that. And I believe we're going to add where we need before the draft. That could be. Uh, Broski and Anthony, uh, I'll see what Dan says, and I'll send it in. All right, fair enough. All right, uh, Trump, is Taco Bell Mountain Dew any good? Uh, is it any good? It's not banned. It's, um, it's, it's just crazy because to me, like usually you go from one place to the next, Coca-Cola tastes like Coca-Cola. Uh, you know, maybe a little bit different. I'll say that probably McDonald's Coca-Cola is, to me, the best tasting Coca-Cola. But Mountain Dew, man, it can just, it just seems like it tastes so dang different every place I go. Whether it's, you know, like I said, that whether it's Speedway or, you know, other other places or uh, like you just said with um, uh, Taco Bell and other restaurants that have it, man. It's just it ain't the same as the Circle K, man. That's all I can really say. All right, uh, Wardle, I love Brad's draft mentality. No depth chart, just uh, a his players ranks. That's all. Yeah, go with what you believe. Don't let somebody else tell you what is right or wrong. In my opinion, uh, and I've said this before on the show in, in the past, Matt Millen knows football. Matt Millen probably would have been a good GM if he would have listened to Matt Millen. Uh, he just listened to so many other people about, hey, we need to do this, we need to do that that he didn't draft what he probably knew would have been the right pick. Probably he would have been a good GM if he would have just done that one thing. Unfortunately, he didn't, and we all know that thing was the Titanic. All right, Robert, uh, what do you got? Uh, We're on the clock, uh, 21 days and counting, 100%. 
And yeah, it's uh, it's going to be a good one. Just so you guys know, I am not going to do a live broadcast for the draft. I'm just going to do the videos uh, when the players happen. Uh, I did the draft last year, and it was a little different when you draft early. But since there's going to be you know two plus hours until the Lions probably draft, uh, yeah, that's just a lot of down air time. And yeah, I'll, I'll just do videos on whoever they take or trades, etc. Eduardo, I hope AG uh, doesn't forget to be aggressive. No, I hope he doesn't, man. I, I'm going to say it seems like that might be his mentality uh, internally. Uh, and it would make sense being a former defensive back, but uh, probably because he didn't want to expose some of the players in the secondary last year. Uh, he went more zone early in the season, but then he obviously went back to what he believes in because he was like, man, we're just getting picked apart here. We got to change something. All right, Rocky, what do you got? The next few weeks, Brad Holmes and MC, MC, uh, MCDC will be throwing out smoke screens on the picks they are targeting. I would agree with that, 100%. 100%. All right, Eduardo, I need AG to be aggressive from week one until our season ends. Our off, uh, offense and is aggressive, and our D needs to be aggressive. I agree. Be aggressive both sides of the ball. Impose your will on the opposition, not the opposite. <clears throat> Joseph, uh, family is up in the stand. Yeah, family up in the stands. Uh, uh, <laughs> good stuff, coach. All right, 100%, man. Hey, that's. When I coach, man, that's my mentality. I tell people, we are not, we never take our foot off the gas. You know, hey, if somebody wants to yell and scream because they feel like we put too much gas on it, I'll apologize. We'll use it as a learning opportunity. But you beat somebody down until you hear the referee say the fight's over, till there's no time left on the clock. You're throwing haymakers. You're going for the kill shot at all, all times. All right. And I don't mean that disrespectfully. Just don't let up off the team. All right. Anthony, hey, what's this? Well, here is the extra and a do and dog for you, Coach. You know what? I'm going to enjoy that do. I'm going to enjoy that dog. And thank you. The bet is on. Now, I need you two to remind me, what is the bet? <laughs> uh, so just so I don't have it wrong, so I know who to send it to and all that stuff. All right, Surfer, what do you got? As far as safety, I don't know. They got the three good ones, Iffy, Kirby, and BB. Either they draft one or uh, turn one of those corners into a free safety. Then again, that is what we I would do. Curious to, uh, as usual, to see. Yeah, and I would say this. We've got real outstanding flexibility with our safeties. So look at everybody you just mentioned, Surfer. They're all, for the most part, able to play cornerback or cover. They can just cover like a cornerback. Uh, maybe Kirby is not the, uh, out of that three, he's probably the weakest at it. But I'd say Iffy and Brian Branch, both of them cover very well. You probably don't want them up against the number one or number two uh, receivers for the other team. But that's why you have Davis and Mosley and everybody else. You match them up with tight ends, running backs or whatever, some receivers, they're going to be able to cover just as well as anybody else. And I think we're really, that's why I'm saying I really think we're going to be uber aggressive this year on D is because we can go man to man across the board and come after you. All right, uh, Broski, has anyone tried Mountain Dew Purple Thunder? Question mark. Mountain Dew Red was my favorite, but I stopped drinking soda. Uh, I have not tried the purple one. I have tried the red one. Uh, I just I stick with my mix of half diet, half regular. Uh, it's just me, and I, I don't even drink a full one anymore. A couple of months back, I started taking that full cup and getting it down to about half a cup. Uh, but, it, man, it, it gets me going in the morning. I can't imagine working without it. Joseph, dang, Ant, you are the man, 100% exclamation points. I concur with that statement. All right, Surfer, money flying around here. Yeah, it's a world. <laughs> we're at the casino, man. Hey, the the Dew Crew Casino. Uh, Robert G., congratulations uh, to your girls, Coach Ant. Yeah, he, those are huge honors. I mean, most of you guys know this was my 34th, yeah, 34th season coaching, and I've had some other kids get up there, but it's incredibly rare. It does not happen often. Um, and for somebody to make the first team, I mean, that's, that's some real stuff, um, to make the, I mean, make any of the teams is incredibly rare. The fact that you got two kids onto the, you know, first team and second team. Yeah. Kudos to them. Uh, they should both feel both them, their family, their teammates, the community should feel very proud of them. That's, uh, that's something you won't see very often. All right. Uh, Eduardo Dallas Turner is my preferred edge. His uh, comp is literally Hutch. Yeah, I know there have been a lot of people saying that, so I, I'll go with that. All right, Eduardo, keep uh, preaching, Coach. Hey, I'm here all day preaching for you guys. All right, Eduardo, last year only had one elite pass rusher, and Houston uh, stole him from us. This year, there are three elite pass rushers. If one of them makes it past 15, 
Brand better get on the phone. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Trump, any news on the kid with a bionic leg? How do we sign him? Is there any rules on the sense uh, he is in the Nerd League? No, he can he can sign a deal with an NFL team. Uh, I'm going to guess he'd be under some legalities to complete the season, obviously, with uh, the UFL. But uh, unless there's verbiage to the contracts, I'm not privy to. Yeah, he can sign at any time. My assumption is if he has another week or two like the first week and he's accurate with that leg, yeah, you're going to have somebody, whether it's the Detroit Lions or, or whoever else in the league, they're going to be giving him a contract real quick. All right, uh, Eduardo, uh, every other year, the three elite edges go top 10, but most of the teams picking the top 10 this year need quarterback, wide receiver, and tag help. So those edges will drop into double digits, in your opinion. No, I think you're right. I think one of them could, too. Uh, could make it into that range. And that's what I was saying. Uh, I could see with just our roster the way it is, I think there's a better likelihood this year that we trade up into the you know high teens, low 20s, whatever, if one of those better edge rushers is around and available, probably going for it. Uh, Dimitri, what do you got? Uh, what up, Doe Lions fam? Exclamation points. Woo! 100% with that. And good morning to you. All right, Eduardo, people love to forget that the uh, there was a flag on that play. There was a flag on that play, 100%. Uh, yeah, the, the pass down filled, uh, Vildor, yeah, all that stuff. Don Cox, Super Bowl or bust, 1,000%, and I agree. And good morning to you, Donkey. Uh, Berg time, good morning, Duke crew and coach. Uh, thank you for that, Bergs, and thanks all you do for the channel, my friend. All right, uh, Trump, Vildor is pretty solid. Yeah, and especially when you're talking for depth, I think he's going to be a real good player. All right, uh, Rocky, what do you got? Green Salutations, Duke Crew, thinking other GMs are getting wise or jealous of Brad Holmes, and it might be tough to trade up or down. Could be, man. It could be. Yeah, um, what he's done here in Detroit as far as the draft and as much success as he's had drafting, that's why I think having the seven draft picks, you know, if you put them on the practice squad, they're going to get got real quick. All right, Robert G., uh, I'd like to see Darius Robinson come to Detroit. You might get your wish, man. You might. All right, Berg time. Congrats on your kiddos and the honors they received for their uh, season. Yeah, gr great season for both of them. One of them, just so you know, the one that made uh, the first team All-State, uh, averaged just over 19 points a game and 19 rebounds a game, uh, along with some other stats. And that's, I'm going to guess, what got her first team. So uh, she's 6'2", 6'3". She plays you know, the post for us. But I told her this next year, she's moving out to the wing. She's going to become basically a guard just because I think that will help her beyond high school in college and maybe even beyond that. Uh, she could probably play some level of professional basketball. So we're going to get her out there popping a bunch of threes, still working in the paint, but dribble driving and doing all that stuff. Told her she's got to make five threes a game. All right, Eduardo, <laughs> whatever we draft, I know it will be good only because Brad has earned this. Yes, he, he's earned the respect and, and probably praise throughout the NFL, let alone the fans. Whatever he takes, until he's proven otherwise, it's probably the right choice. All right, uh, Broski, trade Tipton. Uh, what is the name of this Will guy's show? Uh, I guess uh, he'll have to answer that one. I, I still don't know who Will is. So if I if I upset somebody, I'm not aware of it. All right, uh, Trumps. Hi, Bear. Wondering same thing. Fair enough. Uh, Donovan's uh, Will rocked on podcast? Question mark. Uh, could be uh, that I don't know. Uh, let's see, Miles trade Tipton. Yes, he does. It's a bit much at times. I think he watched this channel grow fast. Uh, I like both channels, very different channels, but I'm tired of the trash. Um, you know, I, I've heard if it's that particular channel, uh, you know, I, I've heard you guys mention it, some stuff, uh, but I, I, yeah, I guess I just don't know the dude. So if I've upset him, I I guess I'm sorry. I, I don't know. I don't think I've ever met the guy or talked about him or anything, so. Who knows, man? Maybe maybe he's just not a fan of Mountain Dew. All right, so <laughs> Silver Surfer. Let me say hello to Broski. The other day, I finally asked him why he was here. Question mark. Behold, the sky came down. Everybody with, with him. You know what? Question mark. They are right. I was getting serious. Uh, good to see Broski. Yeah, Broski's, you know, he's he's all fine in my book, at least. Uh, doesn't mean he doesn't poke the bear. See what I did there? Uh, doesn't mean he doesn't come after us, but he's he's a Bears fan. Of course he's going to. Uh, it's just part of how it goes. <clears throat> uh, tr uh, Trump's what do you got? What could the guy possibly be saying about Dan? You know, I'll let you guys speculate on that. I, I don't know. I, I'm not privy to it. All right. Uh, Fred, good morning, coach and Duke crew. I'm very excited for the upcoming season. This is arguably the best lines roster we have ever had. I would agree. I mean, you probably got to go back 
I'll say this in, in at least right now on paper, this roster, I believe, is better than any of the Lions teams in the 90s. And that's no disrespect to those teams. You had some very, very good Lions teams in the 90s, uh, especially that 91 team, maybe the 93 team, unfortunately, that lost to Brett Favre on the cross-field pass to Sterling Sharp. Those two teams were pretty dang deep, very explosive. Uh, I'll at least say we're on par with those teams, and just because this team hasn't played yet. But we are so deep at multiple positions. I mean, you've got guys who can come in off that bench and play. And again, that goes to my point about can you really keep seven draft picks? Because if you if you do, that means some guys who can play and really play are no longer on this team. I don't know. Uh, if, if it's not the best team, Fred, it's got to be real, real close. All right, Trump Stan is the least opinionated, uh, most balanced uh, podcaster I've watched on YouTube. I'll go with that, and thank you for that. <laughs> uh, I'll take that. Yeah, I'll take that. Thank you. All right, Rosie, Silver Surfer, pound it. All right, and explosiveness. All right, uh, Bo, what got rocked on? I don't watch uh, them much either. Yeah, I, I haven't watched his uh, as much, so, uh, yeah, I, I, can't, I can't say on it. All right, uh, Broski, Trump's genius. Good morning. All right, Freddie, uh, who are we adding? Dog. All right, the, that's the big question, Freddie. Who are we going to add? And, uh, yeah, we're going to have to wait and see when that draft hits. If you're talking about the safety, that I don't know. Uh, Brad Holmes, MCDC, said that we're going to add a safety still, but they did not say if it was going to be in the draft or free agency. My guess is <clears throat> you're probably waiting to uh, the draft, but I don't know, man. I didn't think we'd keep Brock Wright either. Anthony, a uh, reader was on another podcast and said he was literally asking his agent for uh, his ride back home and was told no uh, contract, no ride. Home. Yeah, there you go. Uh, reader, yeah, I did see that where, yeah, they um, they bought him a one-way ticket and he kept asking his agent later in the day, man, wh when's my return flight and everything? He's like, man, they haven't given us it yet. They're not letting you leave that building. <laughs> uh, Doug, good, uh, let's see, we good morning all. 100% and good morning to you too. Uh, D13, good morning, new crew, exclamation point. Heading back to Miami from Cali this morning. Hopefully you're not driving. Uh, made sure I was up early enough, West Coast time, to still catch the show, exclamation points. What position is a can't miss position at 29? Whew, that's a good question, man. And I'm going to say probably offensive line, interior offensive line. I think that this is a real deep draft for that. And assuming your scouts have done their due diligence, it's that's probably the the can't miss area for this team. So we'll wait and see what happens. But that's you know if we stay at twenty nine, my anticipation is unless really the right player happens to fall to us, um, I'm thinking we're probably going that at twenty nine. All right, Bo, uh, all in the family here at the Duke Crew. I'm happy you have uh, have you here, Broski. Yeah, hundred percent. Sort of like you know, hey, you might not always like all your family members, but they're still family. All right, uh, let's see. Christian, what do you got? Lions should go for John Mitchie III in a uh, trade, reunite him. And Jamo, what do you think? Hey, that could be the way they go. I know there was somebody who was talking about that on the show yesterday. Um, yeah, it wouldn't be a bad move. It's just what does it cost to get him and make that happen? I guess uh, that's what we'll have to speculate on. All right, Matthew, uh, what do you got? Greens, uh, <laughs> CJ Garner Johnson wanted to be number one. He did. Uh, with Branch coming out last year, he was not going to be number one. He went back to Philly because he would be number one there. I think there's a lot of truth to that. I think you're pretty spot on, Matthew. Remember last year when uh, C.J. Garner-Johnson said, man, he didn't do all that work to come up and be a backup, basically. So that probably exacerbated the situation. And then Brian Branch's emergence along with Iffy's development. Uh, we already knew about Kirby. Yeah, it, it probably left C.J. Garner-Johnson being the odd man out in that situation. <clears throat> All right, uh, Rocky, and they uh, got the Motor City Duke Crew t-shirt yesterday, and it looks sharp. Good job. And my wife says it looks good, and she's picky. <laughs> there you go. Anthony, man, wives are singing your praises. Uh, so there you go. Anthony, that rocked on dude is a, okay, he basically uh, poached his name off Locked On Podcast. He's, he's a joke. Uh, I did not consider that, but yeah, Locked On, Rocked On, yeah, there could be a lot of similarities. Uh, Berg time. Who is Will? Yes, uh, I'll let them answer that. Doug Wright. Yeah, a, a MCDC type CD Deuce slash was the type who opens the door in uh, descent. And as long as he didn't get to start, yeah, when he didn't get to start last year, he made his his, uh, 
his, his uh, situation be aware. He, he expressed himself. But ultimately, I think at the end of the day, he's not a bad player. It's just unfortunately for him, other guys I think here in Detroit superseded him, Brian Branch and Iffy. If if he didn't develop the way he did, then maybe C.J. Garner Johnson is back. But that's part of sports, man. Somebody's always gunning for you. Somebody's always trying to you know earn what you've got. And when I coach, whether it's you know football, volleyball, basketball, whatever, I don't care what you did yesterday. Can you do it again today? And to me, that's the best way, the most fair way to be a coach. I've never been a fan of just saying you're a starter. And these guys, no matter how hard they work, can't replace you. And I think that's probably what got C.D. Deuce a little bent out of shape is he's used to being the man. Somebody uh, took the man from him. All right, uh, Ed, good morning, Coach Duke Crew. 140, uh, 154 online, only 50, uh, 45 likes. Can't talk today. Come on, guys, hit that like button. Yeah, I can't see on my end what it's at. So if you guys are enjoying the show, hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed, hit the subscription button. Uh, Miles, Motor City Maulers. Oh, uh, there you go. Uh, let's see, Anthony, yeah. Uh, Silver, what do you got? Coach, I really wonder what the Lions and the coaches think about Levi. How good they think he can be? Question mark. I wonder if they target defensive tackle early in the draft, I, as I am hoping. That's a, that's a great question there, Surfer. And it just it's hard to really evaluate what more can he do. And you know, somebody who's had a back fusion can speak on this far better than I'll ever be able to. Hopefully, um, you know, he the fact that he made the the team last year I think speaks volumes to what you know who he is as a person. And what he could be if that back really heals up. And is he ever going to be what he could have been? I don't know, man. Uh, but if they replace him, I get it. Uh, it's part of sports. People, get, like we're just talking about with CD Deuce, people get replaced. All right, Broski. Uh, Mike Centrin is very Dre Blash. Yeah, there's a lot of similarity there. Good call on that, Broski. Uh, Ed, the roster is at 55. If we draft six more, who is on the bubble? A lot of people. A lot of people be fighting for those roster spots. All right, Doug uh, at Bo, uh, well said. Uh, grit is earned. Keep tro uh, troopers together. Culture, 100%. Bo, some undrafted free agent is going to surprise us. That is also a, a great possibility. Uh, Broski, Centralia was born in Haiti. Yeah, in Haiti, uh, that's where uh, my daughter's mother's from, and I know they're going through a, a lot of a lot of gist right now. All right, uh, uh, Burger Time agreed, 100%. Uh, happy... Uh, hat man, happy Brock is back. Yes, agreed. Yeah, I think I, I think most of the Lions fans are pretty happy that Brock Wright is still a Detroit Lion. Anthony, I still hear Lions are rebuilding, and uh, we passed that. Those, yeah, I I think we're past that at this point. Now it doesn't mean we can't build up more, but yeah, we're we're no longer a rebuild. Ed, is there anyone in the pra uh, practice squad, or are they all let go at the end of the season? So yeah, practice squad for the upcoming season hasn't been established yet. So we'd have to get through the draft and everything else uh, preseason. And once they start doing cut downs, that's when they'll the final cut down. They'll announce the practice squad. All right, Doug, I love Santrillis. Uh, he's like a branch underestimated. The guy understands wide receivers. Don't understand uh, underestimate his smarts. That's a fair assessment there, Doug. A uh, bird time. CJ Garner Johnson doesn't fit the culture here. To, uh, take or your blue mask. And shove it, <laughs> shove the guy as a clown. All right, yeah, he's he's not endearing himself by any stretch of the imagination to the Lions fan base at this point. All right, Gary Brad is the only GM in the league that is building a dynasty. You know he's he's doing a great job. We're we're going to be relevant for a for the foreseeable future, not just in a season or two. Yeah, we're going forward for a while. Ed, I'm getting excited about the draft. 100, man, we're uh, like less than three weeks away, and yeah, there's it's every day. You're going to see that anticipation build more and more. Uh, so, yeah, it's it's going to be fun. Bo Mitchell had it uh, had to come back from a serious knee injury. Yes, and he is getting better. Yeah, he's developing. He'll keep developing. Uh, just I would like to see him really develop a little bit better technique when it comes to hand placement, elbow placement, when he's run blocking, and then you can move down to the waist and the knees from there. All right, uh, Server, I was thinking about man, uh, Mike Santrillis right about two minutes ago. He is tough, aggressive, and little. If he only has a little bit uh, better of a pure athlete, he could be something, but maybe even as he is. Yeah, it just comes down to probably where you have to get him at. Mike the Marine, it was funny to hear that uh, callers say they're now a YouTuber because I am now too. 
I'll I'll be here. I'll be 60 this morning. Yeah, and I think there's a lot of us that are probably in our 40s, 50s, uh, 60s. You know, I know there's probably a few people in their 30s, maybe some in their 20s too. <clears throat> uh, Doug, where is he going to play? 53 man roster? Any uh, ads? Uh, will add this question. Yeah, and that's again going back to the draft. You you're going to draft seven players. Man, this deep team just gets even deeper. You're going to be letting some real good players go. Uh, Gary, good morning, y'all. Brock has made some really key plays at the passing game as well as the past couple of years. Uh, not a lot of yards, but some big catches uh, to uh, to change or win games. Yes, and I'm trying to remember which playoff game it was last year. We caught one on the left sideline and shaked and baked a little bit and got to like 10, 15 yards. I want to say that was a Rams game, but don't hold me to it. Ed, a lot of good Lions teams will be looking to grab some of them this year. Yeah, our cuts will get snagged up, I'm thinking, pretty quick. And I think and it's good to have a lot of pro, uh, a lot of players you don't have to worry about. But, uh, man, we're, we're just dang deep. All right, guys, it's it's been over an hour. I'm going to go ahead and uh, – oh, what's this? Hold on a second. Uh, Broski Bear, hey, Anthony sent 70 via Super Chat, and I will. Uh, YouTube takes 30%, so technically it comes out to 49 for – uh, us anyways uh all bears need to do is split this season and i win amazing let's not wait until after the season for a payout no when the uh, hey you i'm gonna let you guys track this i'll be the gatekeeper whatever hold it and whoever wins gets it so uh there you go the first ever on lions talk live bet <laughs> so we got broski bear versus anthony winner takes all uh so we'll see what shakes out so yeah uh, I'm going to hold it and yeah, uh, sorry. I couldn't get through all the chat today, guys. I did the best I could to keep on up, but I see I am egregiously behind on today's chat. I, so I can't make it a two hour show, so I got to hit the road. Hey, hope you guys all have a good one. If there's some breaking news today, I'll get to you guys as fast as possible. Um, it, it shouldn't be too bad a day for me today, but, uh, otherwise, if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. And also, if you enjoy the channel in the video, hit the thumbs up button. Take care. Enjoy the rest of your day. And we'll see you all in the next Lions Talk Live. See you guys.